My only claim to fame in this life is that I beat Skyrim on the hardest difficulty using only a knife and a fork. So today, I will show you some tips and tricks to make you more successful on legendary difficulty. These tips pertain mostly to getting started in the early game and setting yourself up for success when the game in the main quest progresses. If you'd like me to cover the later game as well, let me know. For now, let's get started with topic number one, racism. The race you pick in Skyrim will drastically impact how hard the world will be on you. From a lore perspective, this is the definitive tier list for races in Skyrim. However, from a legendary perspective, the tier list will look like this. Redans are great because they have an inborn 25% magic resistance and immediately start the game off with a doggy summon spell. Orcs are unrivaled because they have the Berserker's Rage skill. This power can be used once a day to double outgoing damage, while also cutting the damage you receive in half. Nothing is stopping you from waiting 24 hours to be able to reactivate it between encounters. You'll be 60 when you finish the game, but at least you won't get one shot all the time. Berserker's Rage cannot be replicated by any other means, but you can get your magic resistance pretty high. So I would say that Orcs are the best race, followed closely by the Bretons. I wouldn't worry too much about starting levels, as you can train them once you start the game. Speaking of starting the game, once you've left Helgen, you can follow the track until you come across a road sign. Taking a left there and continuing southwest will put you on the path to a nearby Shrine to Talos. Here, you can loot a Thelmor elf who will always have a random enchanted item and Thelmor robes. For clarity's sake, it's here on the map. A bit further away, you can cross the nearby river. Directly to the south of Anis's cabin, you can find the Flawless Emerald. This is situated in a decaying deer carcass. Not even 5 minutes into the main game, and we already have a gross value of more than 1500 gold, which is a lot less after taxes and expenses, but still, you can put this starting gold to good use. And you're gonna need it too because Skyrim is a skilled experience. Roughly speaking, the enemies around you become harder when you level up and they also have a higher level. As such, you should have a rough draft of what build you wanna use for a certain character. For the purpose of this video, I made two characters. The first one is an orc warrior that specialized in archery and light armor. When I put some perk points into sneak, I had realized I accidentally became a stealth archer. If enemies got too close, I would switch to one handed and block. This build was further supplemented by alchemy and smithing. Planning it out beforehand ensures that you do not waste points. Additionally, I made a bread and battle mage that was focused on conjuration, archery, sneaking and alchemy. Both of these playstyles were focused on doing damage from a distance and keeping the pressure off of myself, so I didn't have to be subjected to the legendary damage. While you can be quite flexible with builds and perks without falling too far behind, I would like to advise the following. Each time you contemplate taking a perk, you should ask yourself if the perk will increase your damage output or survivability. This becomes especially important in the early game. You are not gonna have a good time if you're level 10 and the only thing you can do is lockpick doors better and charm women. In that order, the astute viewer will have noticed that I haven't said anything yet about destruction magic. And that's because it looks like this in the early game. As you'll notice when you start your legendary journey, the first few levels are fucked up. Your damage is non-existent and the damage you take is unfairly high. But there are some easy steps you can take to increase our survivability. First off, there are two stones that directly increase our tankiness. The Lord Stone can be found directly to the east of Mortal on a nearby mountain. Activating this stone will increase your armor rating by 50 and grant an additional 25% magic resistance. The Atronach Stone can be found directly to the south of Windhelm in the Swamp region. This stone grants you 50 points in magic. 50% spell absorption, but decreases your magicka regeneration by 50%. It's worth noting that the spell absorption is based on chance, rather than always absorbing 50% of a spell. For my money, I think the Lordstone is better for the early game, and once you gain a few levels and perks in light armor, it's outclassed by the Atronax Stone. With this stone, Redans can reach 100% spell absorption for 60 seconds with their racial skill. Secondly, we can increase our magic resistance even further by doing the Book of Love questline. This can be started in the Church of Riften and requires no combat to be completed. Completion of this quest will reward the player with a permanent 15% increase in magic resistance. While we're in Riften, we can stop by the orphanage to bushwhack Grella the Kind. This will set in motion the Dark Brotherhood questline. Completing the first quest will award us with cool armor without the need for combat. Additionally, I started the quest Ill Met by Moonlight in the Falkreath Jail. Completing this quest and killing the werewolf will award you with the Savior's Hide. 
strictly speaking, if you chase the werewolf with the homies, combat is also not necessary. The savior's height gives an additional 15% of magic resistance, while also offering 50% immunity to poison. Now we're decked out and looking like this. Nobody laugh. Lastly, I prayed to RK for a temporary increase in health. And just like that, this is what my stats looked like at level 5. Just for fun, let's spawn in a Thelmor wizard to see how well we can resist magic. Ah, why are you not using magic? Don't you see? Elven supremacy is the only <laughs> Your early game damage is also gonna suck. Later in the game, you will have perk damage multipliers. But for now, we're stuck with damage that looks like this. We can take some steps to increase this. There are three skills that can give you almost an infinite return on investment. These are smithing, enchanting, and alchemy. The first two skills require actual training and perk points to be useful. But alchemy is broken right from the start. This is because the effects are not bound to the level, only the intensity of these effects. As part of the early game experience, this video will focus only on alchemy. Most alchemists will have a personal favor you can do for them, which makes them friendly and subsequently allows you to take large parts of their livelihood for yourself. This will make it easier to gather ingredients. I know you're watching this on your second monitor or your phone, so if you direct your attention to the screen, I'll show you a collection of ingredients you can use for poison and potions at level 1. The vast majority of these ingredients can be bought from alchemists, but if you want to gather them yourself, these are the most promising locations. Red, purple and blue mountain flowers can be found anywhere on mountainous roads. Nightshade can be found in graveyards near cities. If you use the graveyard in solitude, you can enter the catacombs for a large collection of hanging moss. Outside, dragon's tongue will grow in abundance as well. Additionally, they also grow in the hot springs south of Windhelm. One can also acquire creep cluster here. Death bell and swamp fungal pots are found in swampy regions such as Morthal. Salt piles can be found in the fishing barrels in Riften. Slightly to the east of Riften, I found most of the imp stools in a lost prospect mine. Wheat is found in in abundance on farms everywhere. Canis roots are found on rocks, either in mountainous or swampy regions. Elf ears can be found in the white run kitchens. Fly and manita can be harvested in cave regions. Pine Moon Cave has the highest concentration. These potions can be further supplemented with making vegetable soup. Cabbage, potato and leeks can be farmed on farms. The buff of the vegetable soup allows us to infinitely power bash. Now we have our buffs, bonuses, gear and supplies in check. Let's go over some easy early weapons. There is a free elven bow that you can take in the basement of the companions. This is hidden in a lockbox, which of course is functioning just as intended. Since we're on legendary, we're gonna need a lot of arrows. You can get firewood by chopping wood with an axe at sawmills. Ingots can be acquired by either smelting them yourself from ores you've mined or buying them from a smith. Wood and ingots can be used to smith arrows yourself, which will also increase your smith level. The only downside of this is that you'll need smithing perks to make the arrows of that kind. But that is something you should be working towards as the game progresses. For my Breton, I got the spell Bound Bow to never need arrows, and the rest of my damage was outsourced to the lovely army of slaves I accrued. The House of Horror questline can be started in Markarth, and it will award you with a maze of Molech balls. So now you have options for melee and archery. And I'd like to once again remind you not to bother with destruction magic at this point. You are ready now. I have nothing left to teach you because I have an IQ of 70 or so something. Rachel! Yes, Chef! I can't take any more. I, I, I don't know where you are. <laughs> you fucking donut!